Greetings everyone and welcome to Battle Chasers Night War. Now this game is, uh, well it's a kind of a mixture of a, a couple of genres. It's one part dungeon crawler, kind of uh, along the lines of Torchlight, and another part JRPG. This game is set in a universe that is preceded by a number of comics, uh, fantasy comics called the Battle Chaser series, and uh, this is, from what I understand, a sort of continuation from the last volume of that comic series that was released and will kind of be sandwiched between, chronologically speaking, in universe between the last volume and the volume to come, which will continue the series. I think there's three more volumes to come before the, 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 the story arc is completed. Now, I will hold my hand up and say that prior to checking out this game, I had not come across the Battle Chasers comic and after having put a little bit of time into the game, I'm reasonably curious about about the comic. It is your your standard sort of fantasy fare. There's very strong um, similarity with your general kind of fantasy archetypes, but there's also technology here as well. For example, there's a there's a living golem, there's a wizard, there's a fighter, there's a rogue, there's a brawler who happens to be the least likely of the entire troop to be the brawler but she is um, there's various magic MacGuffins and things but that aside the, the story actually seems quite quite enjoyable it, it's kind of kind of like junk food for the soul uh, you you watch it and you're like yeah this is kind of cliche but in the good way the cliche you know you know the, the things are cliche because they were worth repeating and this is very much an example of that but uh, as ever i feel that this game is better shown than described so we're gonna go ahead and jump into a new game and you're gonna get a bit of a treat with an opening cinematic which really does kind of harken back to the comic origins of the game so i will see you in a moment. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Now to actually get to the game itself. So a bit of a prologue. Years have passed since the great warrior and leader of men, Aramis, vanished. Left behind were his mighty gauntlets, artifacts of untold power, giving their wielder the strength to move mountains as the stories were told. Also left behind was his daughter, Gully. She discovered her father's gauntlets setting in motion the events that would make her a target of great importance and bring her into the company of her greatest defenders. Everyone needs great Nolan, defenders. The wise and mighty wizard, whose tongue is as sharp as his wit. Everyone also needs his a sassy wizard. His companion, Calabretto, a war golem of immense power. Garrison, a swordsman, once brother in arms to Aramis, now sworn to protect his only living kin. And the rogue, Red Monica, who can be foe as quickly as friend. Together, they have traveled the capital lands while defending Gully from those who seek the power of her gauntlets for themselves. 
I imagine this is kind of summarizing the comics up to now. On a personal quest to learn more about mana, which fuels the world's magic and technology, has led the group towards a mysterious landmass known as the Crescent Isle. There, vast reserves of mana were once rumored to exist. As they approach the island, they quickly discover why so little is known about the area. Dun dun dun. Okay, so as you can see, very, very um, classic character archetypes there. But uh, again, before anyone gets, oh, the cliche look in their eyes, like rolling, rolling eyes and all that. This is the sort of fun cliche. It, it works in this setting. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm behind it so far. But let's see where this story goes, shall we? Everyone hang on! What are you waiting for? Shoot back! With what? It's a stealth ship. This is stealth? I can't, I am with the wizard on that one. It's always on me, ain't it? These kids don't know how easy they've got it. We're being boarded! Golly, get below deck. You break easier than I do, remember? More incoming, port side. Oh no! Golly, what? I've got you. Like I said, everyone needs a sassy wizard. All right, Red. Looks like it's just me and uh, uh Also a rogue of figures. dubious morality. That is let's be it's a requirement, okay? This is a fantasy setting. These are Certain things you have to have for it to be a complete fantasy setting. Uh, okay, and here we are, the game itself. We made it. Or at least I did. Bretto? Oh, that's cute. Garrison? Oh, that's not as cute. Please be nearby. I like that she has a nickname for her golem friend. Though... On the to on the on the topic of names, they are all. I mean, we, we've mentioned the cliches, but I will I will draw special attention to Garrison. All of the others, they're kind of hidden a little bit. Calibretto, Calibrate, yeah, okay, Gollum. But I I, I do like that one. Also, a bit of a nickname, Bretto. That 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 adds a lot more personality. Red Monica, Red Monica. It, uh, yeah, that's a fairly fairly good roguish name. It, it, they all kind of wear their jobs on their sleeve if you ask me nolan knowledge but garrison garrison goes above and beyond that that is that is much more than just wearing your job on your sleeve that's <laughs> might as well be called stabby mcstabber ah or slashy mcswordman ah oh, dear garrison all right let's uh though to be fair the open cinematic he's fairly good at his job from what i could tell Right, let's go and see. Hello. Oh, okay. You're awake. Bretto, you're all right. Oh, she sounded sounded worried. I wonder what she meant by you break easy than I do, though. Yes. Are you feeling better? Wow. Okay, that is not the the voice that I was expecting from Calibretto. Oh, okay. I guess you know uh, this is this is uh, pointing out that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. You've Very been nice. resting for a few hours. So, sounds more more like uh, a Mr. Handy than a war machine. I guess I wasn't completely prepared for that cannon blast. Was I dreaming, or did you leap off the ship to catch me? I of course did. did. He's a robot How do you get down in one piece? Nolan. Like I said, everyone needs a sassy we wizard. We fell through a portal he opened, placing us on the ground with only minor injuries. I mean, the sass part is not necessarily needed, but it, it does add to the experience, I feel. what happened to him? We don't know. And Garrison? Monica? Garrison fell through the portal as well. I mean, in his 
his defense, he literally did fall. Everyone else more or less caused it by choices, but Garrison Garrison was, was an innocent bystander in this, though I'm fairly certain that the outcome was better than what the alternative Monica would be. Monica appears to be missing, along with Nolan. Then let's get moving. They could be hurt. I'm sure Monica and, and Nolan are the least likely to be heard out of all of them. Garrison right already went ahead to search for them. Are you sure you're well enough to move? I'm so woozy, but we don't have any time to waste. I'll be fine. I... First, allow me to further heal your wounds. Then we will meet Garrison. Right, okay, so we are, for all intents and purposes, in a dungeon right now. And so our dungeon skills are in effect. Now, down the bottom, you can notice that I can cycle between my characters, and each one has a different kind of skill. We'll get a little bit more information, though, if we go into the, the this kind of journal, if you like. And if we have a look at skills, this is our dungeon skill. Uh, Gully can ground smash, which will briefly stun all nearby enemies, and the stun will carry over into combat. Now, that is really important to pay attention to, because this isn't like torchlight in that the combat is action based it actually does switch to a turn based um kind of scene for combat so these effects that we can inflict in the dungeon mode that's actually pretty cool because it will carry across and then we've got very specific abilities in combat and we'll go over those as the time comes but calibretto's skill is revitalize restores party health by a moderate amount now it only has six charges now i believe that they restore during resting so if you go to like an inn or a campfire that kind of thing it'll get better we also have an inventory which can be broken down into various different categories of things we have the main journal we have a dungeon codex which is actually pretty cool i always like games that give me you know various information quite often it's not actually necessary but it's still fun and we we have fishing because what game doesn't have fishing these days oh the similarities to torchlight abound but uh right let's go ahead and use up one of our charges i'm not going to use up two of them let's just get ourselves a little bit uh fixed there and we can walk around with either character it doesn't seem to affect the ooh, the movement speed at all um i wonder if calibretto's larger bulk would ooh, wait a second i wonder if calibretto's larger bulk would mean that we have troubles getting into areas that might be something to bear in mind but oh i almost missed this my lord uh yeah yeah i can move through ah, ha, 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 ha. thank goodness let's have a look at you something survived the fall intact common parts and six gold ah pretty good and some brambles everywhere okay it doesn't look like i've got any kind of camera controls which is a little bit of a potch and of course this is oh actually it did work i was gonna say this is fantasy so you know you've always got to check waterfalls but i was completely prepared for that not to work uh right next to these pile of bones is scrawled a note awoke in the night didn't realize what happened to Rich rochelle until it was too late the look in her eyes it was like she'd never seen me before she gored me real good before I could react. It was ever since finding that manor in the crack in the ground. Shouldn't have taken her so close to it. Tired. Getting dark. Uh, okay, so Rochelle, a companion or a pet? Because you're next to some sort of large creature skeleton. Alright. And you did get gored. Hmm. A drenched scout tunic. Marvellous. Let's go and have a look at that then. Uh, we've got different sets of armor for the different characters. Okay, that makes sense. Probably different weapon types too, I should imagine. Uh, okay, this is better. It drops my stamina though. Which in turn looks like it drops my health as well. But it is much better for physical and magic defense. So there's really no particular reason not to go with this one. Uh, they all seem to have bonus damage, though, which is interesting for armor. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and wear that. Nice little pick-me-up there. Can I check this waterfall? Let's not rush away. No, I cannot get over there. Ah, being too greedy, I guess. But that does look like a cave there. Ah, my lord, it looked like there was like a doorway beyond the waterfall. Okay, onwards, ever upwards. Oh dear, what is this? Uh, what's that? That's exactly what I'd like to know. Ah, Another another staple of fantasy games.
All right, then. Let's see. Now, we've got a bunch of combat abilities. We can also flee. We can also use any kind of item we have. Now, abilities use mana. But mana works a little bit different in this game. You'll also notice that the actions have a speed. You'll notice that the slime took its turn first. But it's currently in a, you know, like a waiting state. It's because whatever attack or ability it's decided to use costs time. It isn't an instant ability. For example, if I use this one, it's because it's very fast, it would trigger before the slime, but after someone else got to go. If I use this one, um, it would trigger in much of the same sort of time frame. But now you've got mana, which is currently 130, 130, and there's a small bit of a bar just at the edge there. And these um, active abilities don't cost mana, but mention overcharge. Overcharge is like a battle temporary mana pool that you can build up by using your abilities and you will consume mana from the overcharge pool before you dip into your actual mana reserves um, which gives you a way of casting spells for free if you do a little bit of work first which makes a lot of sense right this one will apply sunder and increase physical damage taken by 10 percent for three turns and will generate 10 overcharge sure let's go for that one there we go very nice and we can follow up with jab it'll do 14 damage and generate 10 overcharge wow that's uh, quite a wallop there to be fair right what are you gonna do 29 hp that actually hurts a little bit honestly now i could go for this and dip into my mana a little bit but there's really no need with the amount of health that we've lost so far 14 HP, and we'll finish this one fairly easily. Though, let's have a look at the abilities. Um, hmm. Scattershot, 10 mana, 16 damage, 8 damage to a nearby enemy. Uh, place a damage shield on an ally, which will absorb 31 damage. That's actually pretty cool. But again, I think we should maybe uh, just go for a regular attack, and in fact, it knocked it out. Didn't kill it, just knocked it out. Because, you know, we're not the kind of adventurers that go around killing things. And, oh my lord, our birds perched on, on Calibre. That is so lovely. Reminds me of the golems from uh, Laputa now. All right, let's have a look. We got common parts and simple slime Ico. I guess we harvested it while it was sleeping, which... Uh, uh, hmm. I mean, I guess slime. I, I, I wonder if that is that is like the same as ripping something skin off. I'm sure it isn't with the slime. Maybe it was just, just gathering some of the excretions. I'm sure the slime is okay. That I really care, but uh, at the same time, if we go to the effort of only knocking them out, I feel it, it it changes it somehow. If we then harvest organs from it, I, I mean, it goes from ah, oh, it's kind of sweet. You don't you don't kill your enemies. You just you just incapacitate them. To you're actually only keeping them alive, so it will hurt more. Huh? Uh, are we the good guys? Right, Garrison went northwest. Uh, sorry, northeast, looking for Monica. Uh, sorry, Monica and Nolan. We should head that direction. Yes, we should. I'm sure they're fine. But we should hurry just in case. Acknowledged. And of course, uh, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to explore. Uh, so straight into another battle. That is kind of the overworld map. You can encounter battles, but it's very different to the dungeon map. Oh, you've got a haste ability. That's not very good. Have you got some sort of slow ability? Because that would be an interesting combo to have. Uh, but let's try and focus down the bat since it's going to be a bit of an issue now it's fast. And also this. Oh, unfortunately, we weren't able to quite do enough damage there. Uh, I may need to get Calibretto healed up soon. It's time to deliver the pain. Uh, must you? Uh, it sounds so, so mean. But yeah, let's take you out because you're going to get multiple turns shortly. Uh, oh, that's actually quite cool. They, they react to what their allies do in battle. That's actually pretty funky. There we go. We did a lot of damage there in one attack. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to stall this so that I don't have to use their dungeon ability to heal. Uh, I'm going to try and heal in the fight instead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you defend. Let's see how, how you go. Hold left trigger to get more information about buffs and debuffs in combat or in dungeon. Oh, that's actually pretty good. There we are. That's fine. We've got a nice old heal there. Perfect. Right, at this point we can finish the fight. There we go. Another victory. 
Indeed. And the birds, once again. Calibretto's friends. I, I, I'm not sure where I stand with Calibretto because it's clearly an engine built for war and at the same time has a fairly, fairly gentle demeanor from what I can tell. I, I wonder if that, that's kind of a conflict for it. I wonder if, if it feels like it's got some sort of complex. <laughs> I, I just want to be friends with the animals, but I was built to destroy things. Why? Why does the world feel like cardboard beneath my impossible strength? Poor Bretto. Uh, enemy slain 128. Oh, we actually got uh, bonus EXP for only using our overcharge and never using our mana. And we also got a bit of uh, bonus EXP for doing it quickly. Awesome. Uh, we gathered rough wool scraps, some digger silk, and common parts. Okay, I mean, it looks like a furry spider. Pa perhaps we did just shave it. Uh, I'm not giving up on the idea that we're not actually torturing them. I, d I, I hope our characters are not, not that way inclined. That, that would be... Uh, Difficult, uh, or maybe it wouldn't be. Maybe we just get used to it. Coast Iron Ring of Blades, a ring imbued with offensive properties. Oh, requires level three. Bonus damage sixteen and stamina six. Wow, that's actually pretty awesome. And what we got down here? Take all the loot. We have got some veil herbs, some blade leaf, and four faintly glowing powders. All right. So as I was saying, this is the over map. Now. There will be encounters, like just regular combat there. I can't avoid that. There's nothing I can do. When it's in dungeons, you can simply go around sometimes or sneak past. Um, but there are also going to be some, um, like, story encounters on the Overland. You should have messed with someone else. I am not sure the spider understands. I mean, maybe it does. I don't know. Uh, is there any way I can delay my turn? I can flee if I really want to, but I don't see any reason to do that. I guess I could defend. It's instant. Um, but there's not really much point. I may as well just go for the attack. Now, depending on what kind of attack you go for, you might be slowed down. Indeed, you were. Let's see if we can win this. Ooh. Oh, that was uh, perfect. We didn't take any damage at all. I'm not impressed. What, what do you mean? I'm very impressed. We did very well there, I feel. Now, it looks like the EXP we gain is per monster, but then shared equally amongst the party members, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, perfect. So we got an extra bit of EXP for that one as well. Um, rough wool scraps, some digger silk, and common parts. What are we going to use the common parts for? Well, there is crafting. In the game, from what I know, though, we don't appear to have any kind of crafting ability. Though we've got some uh, interesting uh, items that we're picking up from all over the place. Keep moving ever so slightly. A uh, variety of miscellaneous ingredients used in crafting. Uh, common scrap of cloth from humanoids in the Vale and Rushlands can be used to craft various simple weapons, armor, and accessories. Marvelous. So then it may actually be quite uh, an extensive crafting setup, which I'd be pretty happy with. Okay. Worn letters on the top of the sign read Talon Crossing. The plank pointing east says High Lake Village, with the message, not anymore, carved cryptically into the wood directly over it. The rest is damaged beyond readability. Hmm. That's a little bit worrisome. What have we got over here? Take all loot. We've got some more veil herbs, blade leaf, and flame glowing powder. And, oh, an actual chest underneath these things. Oh, Calibretto's just walking around with birds on his head. Oh, th this is... I I do feel for Calibretto. I, I, I genuinely do. Though he's pretty good at his job as well. So uh, whoever made you, made you quite well, but seemed to have either a sense of humor or were just cruel in giving you the personality that you have. Or maybe you were given the freedom to, to adopt whatever personality you wanted. Maybe you, you just learned to be the way you were. Which is both both beautiful and kind of sad, considering your your destiny as a war machine. Ah, poor Calibretto. I, I hope you can retire someday to a life of peaceful contemplation. And there we go. We're going to need to get you out of there before you get too dangerous. Now, I can use this, which would be quite good. Now, I don't know how much HP they have, but I believe you can start getting information from killing enough things once you've uh, unlocked um, certain abilities. I, I think you start building a compendium or, or something along those lines. Right, deal 16 damage to the target and 8 damage to the nearby enemy. Let's just hope they're nearby. There we go. And, in fact, that was a double kill. Fantastic. I approve. Okay, that actually got us quite a lot of EXP as well. Uh, we got 12 EXP for a double kill and 18 EXP for only using overcharge. Not bad. Okay, moving on. And what did we find? Take all loot. A Veil Scout's Tunic. Uh, 
Okay, is that better than what we've already got? No, no it's not. It increases stamina slightly, but other than that, no it does not offer any particular benefit. Okay, well I'm pretty happy with uh, what we've already picked up then. Now, we could go and fight those spiders, or we could wander around this way. But, I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. This is an RPG, and RPGs need EXP. EXP is how we don't die, basically. How we don't get hopelessly underleveled and then fight a boss that it's, it's mathematically impossible to defeat. So, I am going to be going out of my way to encounter every possible encounter. Uh, I'm just going to lay, lay that down right now. If you're hoping that I'm going to avoid things, yeah, no. I mean, I'm not going to go out of my way to complete every single little fetch quest. I never do in, in RPGs. But if it's on my way, I'll do it. If it's only slightly out of my way, I'll probably do it. But if there is a fight nearby, I will gravitate towards it like a moth to a flame. Um, unfortunately, because it often ends with the same sort of result as a moth being attracted to a flame. Uh, right, we've unlocked Nature's Boon and unlocked Quake Fist. Okay, so we've leveled up. I'm not sure if that if there's any kind of stat selection or, or anything along those lines, but uh, clearly we unlock new abilities. So let's have a quick look at that. Did our stats go up at all? I actually don't know. Uh, I wasn't paying close enough attention to the stats as they were before, but we apparently have some new abilities. Quake Fist deals 34 damage to a target. Costs 15 mana, so it's just a straight up uh, attack. Okay. And Nature's Boon. For the next three turns, anytime an ally receives damage, they're healed for three health. Oh, okay. Well, generally speaking, I'd say that our opponents have been hitting us for more than three damage, so it's not really going to help us, except that it will um, allow us to blunt attacks. So I suppose if we came up against certain types of opponents, maybe that, that are just weak, we could just get through the fight without ending with any um, uh, vitality damage having been taken, which you know, would be useful, I suppose. Um, I'm, I'm failing to see how useful that skill would be, though. I, it might be useful in very, very specific circumstances. Though. We'll, we'll have to see. Maybe if uh, some enemies do rapid but low damage attacks, then it might be, might be fun. Or perhaps another situation would be a swarm. A swarm of very low damage enemies, but a great deal of them. Because at that point, it might make a massive difference, in fact. Yeah, that, that is possibly where that skill would shine. Right, let's go for another jab. Acap there we go. Perfect. Uh, right. I'm actually pleased with that attack. Thank you very much, because we can use Healing Wave. Let's get you all nice and healed up. I'm a little worried that you'd actually kill the spider though if you attacked it right now. So just defend and hope the spider goes for you. No? That's a shame. I was hoping the spider would go for you first. But okay. Uh, that's fine. Let's just take you out. We're generally speaking in a much better place than we were before coming in here. And we still haven't had to use uh, Calibretto's uh, dungeon abilities because I'm not sure how often we'll get an opportunity to replenish those so I'd rather hold on to them than not okay overcharge only 14 extra exp it is worth going for that it seems because 14 out of 100 is you know not not a small fraction of the total go right, ahead village ruins I'm glad you are right well that's that's a, that's a suitably deep and kind of um, <laughs> almost drudge judge dread kind of voice just I always have a scowl. What you did during the airship battle, shielding the cannon blast. You would have done the same for me. Maybe, but with messier results. Uh, I, I take it you do not have the power. Well, I guess it is those magic ga gauntlets shielding that kind of uh, force. Yeah, that, that makes sense then. So, But the fact that he'd still do it anyway, kind of sweet, but also kind of pointless. Pointlessly sweet. I suppose. You're a brave kid, but remember, we don't fully understand the power of your father's gauntlets. You have to be more careful with them. I had no choice. Uh, I mean, you did, but you chose to put your friend's life above yours. I don't think that's something that you could, should shy away from. I think you should own that choice. Well done. It, it, it speaks of your character. No, I guess not. 
Oh, okay, that went in a completely different direction than I thought it was going to go. Garrison actually acknowledges, yeah, I... Th well, okay, fair enough. I guess we are I a party of good he people, was actually. trying to thank you. I think he did thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he likes Have having to translate. any sign of Monica or Nolan? I haven't. And this village looks long abandoned. There are lights on the horizon. To the east. Might be a town. We should investigate. That we should. If they survived, they likely headed that direction. I'm sure it's not. What do you mean if? Ah, see, Gully agrees. Nolan saved us. He can save himself. And Monica too. Yeah, again. You're probably right. I'm fairly certain that Nolan is the least likely to be in danger of all Let's of go you. find them. Okay, Garrison has joined the party. Well, before we move forward, let's have a quick look at Garrison, shall we? Um, attack power is a 92. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, right, your skill, quick step. A dash that avoids trap damage and adds a massive haste buff to Garrison if he initiates combat with it. Oh, uh, that's pretty cool. So again, it's a skill that will kick in when you... Um, when, if you proc it and then enter the turn-based combat, then that skill will have an effect, but you can just use it to move around the dungeons, which is which is pretty cool, honestly. Uh, I wonder if you can stack them. I wonder if you could use Gully's um, Ground Pound Stun ability and Garrison's Dash ability to enter combat with Garrison buffed and the enemy stunned. That would be an interesting thing to force science. Now, you've got Parry, Swift Strike, Ooh, wow, Swift Strike gets 15 overcharge. Uh, I'm assuming that most of your things require a lot of mana then. No, no, actually not too bad. And the party would get a 10% haste too from that one. Okay, though that one is pretty nice. Can use up to 40 overcharge and deals 44 damage and 0.2 damage for each overcharge used. Wow, okay. All right, what have we got here? Forest Veil, Spoils of War, the General Returns, one of four. A handwritten journal entry is scrawled on parchment. General Xavier returned from the main front last night. Because he came in darkness, few got a good look at him, other than to say he seemed well. The wars elsewhere have taken their toll on the outpost. With ranks thinning and our defensive practices becoming lax, I'm not sure Ravenheart even bothered to take his patrol last night. But then, he always didn't seem the lazy sort. That should change with Xavier stalking the halls once more. Car lost. Okay. Uh, lore obtained. Let's go have a quick look at that. Uh, okay, so we've got a new place. Ooh. One of four will get a reward at the end. A moderate prismatic flask. We saw 60 health and 40 mana. Okay, well that's actually pretty cool. So uh, we'll be rewarded for filling out all of our lore entries. Okay, now to see how Garrison handles a battle. Uh, first up is... Uh, Gully, we'll go for the slime, I think. Overcharge is displayed in red next to your mana bar. It's generated by using regular actions. Overcharge is consumed in place of mana and use of bonus effects in certain abilities. Goes away after combat, though, so make sure to use it while you can. Very, very well. Right, let's uh, try and alpha down the slime. Wow, you do a lot of damage. My goodness. Sure, take it out. May as well get rid of it so it can't actually make any attack. Okay, they do have a uh, pretty hefty blow there. And yes, we do know Garrison. I've been talking about it before. Didn't you hear? Uh, I suppose you were in the village, scouting ahead. You are forgiven. Uh, we can probably wipe this one out. There we go. Now, you've got 15 mana. Let's have a look. You'll do 44 damage straight up. Or 21. So, yeah, let's go for that one and see how much health you have. Oh, crap. You've got an attack first. Oh, wow. One hit wonder. That was fantastic. I approve. So many ways to get bonus EXP in these fights. Uh, we got an overkill, one hit wonder, and overcharge only bonus. That was actually quite substantial there. Wonderful. I approve. And moving on, let's see what loot is up ahead. Uh, blade leaf, veil herbs, and four faintly glowing powders. Right, what's this say? A road sign leans precariously to one side, reading North, Harm's Way, South, Wilderness. 
okay, well, we've got to head to the town, so let's go there first. I know I'm going against my, my, my explorer instincts there a little bit, but this must be the village. I see a few lights, but no people. Where are they? Hmm. Let's bang on a few doors. Uh, okay, find the town. And sure, let's let's have a poke around and then we'll wrap the uh, episode up there, I think. Half pint or full? Always full. Uh, okay, so you're an inner town. I can browse somewhere. Let's have a look at what you got. Adventure is always better if it starts with a stiff drink. I think that makes sense, yeah. Pauper's soup. 56 gold? I think your idea of, of a pauper and mine are very, very different. My lord. Common ale, 56. Devil's spine, triple. A favorite around the time of Kickstarter Fest. <laughs> I approve. Increases attack power by 40 for a few battles, but will leave you tired once the effects wear off. And Granny's Battering Pie. A comfort comforting meal makes one feel rested, restoring 24 health each turn for a few battles. Wow, okay. Food actually has an enormous effect. An enormous effect. I like it. Uh, attack power up. And defense up. Okay, I can see why they're worth so much. Tiny worm. Um, I think we've already got these. I might be wrong, though. Shoddy fishing pole and tiny worm. Maybe we need to check on our own inventory there. Uh, Come on okay. in. Well, let's have a quick chat, then. Where are we? Missed the sign on the way in. You're in the town of Harm's Way. Don't worry. The names are more bark than bite. That's a relief. What tavern is this? The disemboweled traveller. Oh my god. <laughs> really? <laughs> really, Dogan? Are you trying to have customers, or, or do you just like the quiet life? Hello. My lord, the disemboweled traveller. I mean, okay. Uh, I do have some items that I could get rid of, though. Um, for example... Um, I mean, what what are these showing? Because should I really? Hmm. Attack power down, but stamina and physical defense up. I didn't realize the physical defense would go up with that one. But honestly, I'm kind of happy with the attack power being slightly high. So we're going to sell that and this. No reason to carry them. And I don't think we're level three quite yeah, yet. Have a seat. Uh, no thanks, we're, we're heading out. Uh, I, I hope we don't, but I guess that would be good practice for you. Right, what type of fishing rod do we have? We've got a splintering branch and a moldy lure. Some fish aren't too picky. And this can technically be used for fishing. Hmm. Well, I mean... You know what, Sean? Sure. Uh, no, but I wouldn't mind buying your fishing supplies. Now, apparently that one's uh, down a little bit from what a previous was, but really, are these worse than what we've currently got? Barely passable as a fishing boat. Um, I'll buy a tiny worm and I'll I'll have a look at that because Hello. that Safe seems travels. odd to me, but okay. Let's uh, have a look down. We've got a moldy lure. It's got a lure attraction of 60. This one's got 70, so why is that one shown as worse? I don't quite understand that one. Perhaps there's something that I'm not getting. It's showing me that this... Okay, so it's showing me what I've currently got. But I would have... I mean, it makes sense for that one to be red, but it was red before as well. Okay, I'm a little bit confused, but we won't won't uh, dally too long on that. Okay, what we got over here? The Altered Bestiary. Well, well. We have fresh band of adventurers loose here in the Vale. Experienced ones, no less. We've seen our share of battles, and you. <laughs> I have, though by the way you hold your blade, not the same kind. Let's just say my foe are the wilder kind. I could definitely believe that with the fact you're wearing a wolf. You're not even wearing a wolf. You're wearing the wolf by the looks of it, my lord. And it actually looks like you're not actually entirely non-bestial to herself, judging by the ears and the claws. Her name's Raha. Beastmaster Raha. As I see it, the only foes worth fighting are the untamed kind. And lucky you. This island is littered with them. So we've seen. <laughs> the slimes and bats in the woods around town? No. You're in for worse than that. 
We're here looking for lost friends, not hunting trophies. Indeed. Many get lost on this island. Rescue mission or not, you could use some basic advice to survive here. Take this bestiary journal. Track the creatures you fought. You'll find doing so rewards you with insight into their strengths and weaknesses. Survive long enough, I'll point you towards more worthy tasks. You may find it necessary when searching for your friends anyhow. The search will be brief. We'll make sure of it. Then we'll be gone as quickly as we arrived. I've heard that before. Don't get killed, adventurers. Be careful. Okay, we now have the bestiary to have a check on. Uh, okay, well, that's actually pretty cool. So this is how we would get ideas of their health, I imagine. Uh, Forest Vale, Iron Outpost. Slimes enjoy feasting on the bones of the fallen and are known to congregate in areas of great turmoil. Oh, wow, we've already killed quite a lot. Four of them, in fact. And stats and ability details will be shown when we've killed enough. Maybe... Well, actually, the looks of it, one more. Uh, we know that they have the combat ability Slime Chomp and Slime Spit because they've used them. Um, I assume. Oh, no, ability names. Okay, okay, I get you. Because I was wondering, I haven't seen Slime Spit. Uh, slime Spit. If the slime takes damage in the dungeon... Oh, so, sorry, Slime Split. Uh, this is a dungeon ability. It will split into multiple slimes. Oh, that's... Interesting to know. Ooze Slayer, defeat 50 slimes, increase stamina by 1, and Outpost Hunter, defeat 100 enemies from the outpost, and you'll get uh, increased stamina for all heroes as well. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Beast Perks. Oh, and that looks like uh, what we just saw, but a little bit more um, in depth. Beast Hunter, defeat 50 beasts. Oh, sorry, Outpost Hunter is defeat 100 enemies, so I guess slimes also count toward that. Beast Hunter, def uh, increased experience earned by 5% for all heroes. My lord, that's worth it. Uh, Exterminator, defeat 50 spiders. Increase evasion by 1% uh, by for everyone. And Wing Clipper, defeat 50 bats. Increase haste by 1% for all heroes. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, we've also got the Ruins Bat. It's got Swift Flaps and Toothy Strike. We don't know what it drops, though. Okay, and Ruin Spider. Oh, we've killed enough of these. We've killed five, so we can see their health, their attack power, their physical defense, and magic defense. Venomous Bite deals light damage and applies a poison to the target, dealing damage over time. And Pounce deals light damage. Okay, very, very good to know indeed. And what we got here? A well-made sign hangs from the oiled gargoyle on the door. It reads, out to lunch. We... <laughs> We can rip the sign down and throw it in the dirt just because we feel like it. How dare they be out to lunch? Or we can leave, which is what we're going to do because we're not hooligans. We don't just show up to someone's town and start vandalizing people's signs, my lord. A collector. Oh, sorry. The collector. Oh, uh, okay. You, you're kind of an interesting character. Uh, browse ways. Uh, overcharged cannon. This is requires level nineteen. Sorry to close. Okay, yeah, these these are hopelessly overpowered and also require some sort of currency that I do not have. Uh, okay, uh, maybe this is kind of the, like the black market trade or something. Tome of knowledge, garrison. Tome of knowledge specifically tailored to unlocking potential within garrison. Grants a single perk point to garrison. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Minor tome of knowledge. Um, grants a single perk point to the chosen hero, but that's a lot more expensive. Ah, that's that's actually pretty interesting. And then the Greater Tome of Knowledge uh, gives a single perk point to all heroes, and a Greater Tome of Knowledge offered at a discount by the Collector to help the heroes deal with the troubles plaguing harm's way. Grants a single perk point to all heroes. Oh, oh okay. That's actually quite nice. We've got some really nice things here. And then, of course, we've got, like, legendary fishing supplies. <laughs> Because everyone needs that. Also, I think I like the, the collector. <laughs> yeah, I definitely like the collector. That, that is fantastically also creepy. Uh, what have we got down here? Curio shop. The door to this oddly shaped hut is locked. Strange tinkering sounds can be heard within. Let's knock. The tinkering continues, but no one answers. Okay, we've still got an exclamation mark there. We can knock again, so okay. It's acknowledging that we've already tried. The tinkering sounds stop briefly. We're replaced by a few curt profanities. No one answers. Uh, maybe we should leave. I, I, but I, I, I was going to see if it just said knock again, in which case I was going to leave, but have Calabret or knock. I can only assume this is going to result in hilarity. The door nearly flies off its hinges. What's the meaning of this? Oh my, a war column. That is 
almost fascinating enough to warrant my time. Being fascinating is a requirement? Yes. Now please stop knocking and go away. And I expect you to buff out the damage in my beautiful antique entryway. Ah. Uh, well, as far as first impressions go, that possibly isn't the worst. But it's certainly not a good one. Grimbeard Smithy. Oh, I like the name. Also, the, the golden exclamation mark. The heavy iron door, radiant furnace, and proliferation of metalworking tools strewn about tells you this must be a smith shop. Pull the massive door. You're the town smith. Ooh, voice acted. I, it's, it's interesting because the voice acting seems to be there and not be there kind of arbitrarily, which is a little bit off-putting in a way. I like it when it's there. The voice acting is actually pretty solid. But it's a shame that it just sort of sometimes isn't around. Now, I can understand it not being there for every combat, dialogue where they're just congratulating each other on the head because that would very soon become kind of annoying to listen to but in dialogues like in the in the in the bar i'm assuming that that dialogue was a one time only dialogue so why wasn't that uh voice acted interesting um a, a, a curious design choice hey. oh scottish of course also cyborg arm i like Who the hell are you ah <sighs> What a warm welcome. That's a rough way to greet strangers. <laughs> Being strangers, you don't know how rough we get around here. Uh, okay. I suppose we're gonna learn quickly. Hey, skin's got to be thick to survive in a forsaken land like this one. And your hammer better be heavy. Uh, is that a euphemism? Speaking of forsaken lands, how did you lot end up here? We came in on an airship. As we approached, pirates ambushed us. Sounds right enough. Though not quite pirates, as you see. No. Bandits. Simple as that. Ah. Just thugs full of hot air. But they've been a right pain in the ass recently. Bandits. Who do they work for? Well, being bandits. Themselves, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like how straightforward that answer was. Well said. We're acting differently the last few moons. Less scatterbrained. More organized. That's a little bit concerning. As a few of us left a bit worried. Ah, uh, fair enough. We were separated from some friends during the battle. We think they may have them, or know where they are. We'd like to chat with them. Chat, really? I'm not sure that's what's going to be, be happening. <laughs> Chat. And neither does Grimbeard. He's not fooled. A few weaklings came by causing trouble last dawn. Chased them off down the south road. You can head that way if you think you'll find your friends. Fair enough. If we don't, they'll regret it. Keep your head up. They must have a camp down there somewhere. Yep, I'm still here. I like I like this Grimbeard fellow, um, but okay, we've got a bandit. Uh, find the bandit messenger Grimbeard chased south. Keep him sharp. Thank you. Will do. Or or dull in the case of hammers. I, I, a sharp hand, hammer isn't really a hammer anymore. Um, but uh, with that, we're going to end the episode here. I think we've covered a fair bit of ground in this first episode, and there's going to be plenty of ground to cover as we head south. I hope you've enjoyed it, though, and will be joining me for the next. As ever, I always welcome any feedback down in the comments below. But until next time, do take care, everyone, and don't lose your wizard. <laughs>